Hey friends, it's Vicki Booten here with scrapbook.com for American Crafts. I love my art crayons, we all know that. I show you lots of techniques, but this has to be my hands down favorite, use it all the time technique. And it's the kissing technique. And it is as much fun as it sounds, kissing technique. Here is the thing I want you to remember. This is a line I will tell everybody. It's a kissing technique, but not kissing like it's The Rock or Brad Pitt. It's kissing like it is your nanny and she's frail and you don't wanna hurt her with your kiss. So we're going to apply this gently and I'm gonna show you and maybe I'll even trick you at the end and maybe get a little firmer there because nanny, you extra love her and you gotta give her a little bit more of a squeeze. <laughs> so let me show you. First thing we're gonna start with, which we always start with, with any of my backgrounds, is the Vicki Booten Foundations paper. 140 pound, extra heavy, crisp white, uh, mixed media paper. So it is great for wet mediums. It works as well as say you want to use a watercolor background, but this is something you can easily access in a 12 by 12 size or format. So we're gonna start with this again, this package is deceiving when you see it online. It is just a clear sheet on top here that covers this white background. And I have one ready to go at the back here. So it is super heavy. When you hear that, the card is nice and heavy and will hold the load of water when you put it on and the weight of the water. It will buckle a little while it's wet, but as it dries, it starts to flatten out. So this is the background of the kissing technique. The other thing that you need is, my other go-to is a sheet of non-porous acrylic. So this you can buy in a package under uh, my brand or any kind of packaging or anything that you have that is like a plastic will work great for this. I like to have something like this rather than my craft mat to use because I can pick it up and move it around when I'm using it. So that is why I like the acrylic sheets. The other thing you can use, this is magic, is um, the cover of your foundations pad. You can rip that off and use the inside of this and it's even heavier. So the nice thing is, is it can be used for a mini book. You could cut this and use this as a page for an album or some other kind of creative recycle, upcycle, reuse, or it can be your tool for adding the um, backgrounds or the mixed media backgrounds. So for this technique, let's show you, cause this is what's nice. I'm listening to what you're asking for and you have asked for uh, start to finish process videos. So when I make backgrounds, you can actually see what you can do with it other than just making a pretty background. This layout, and it is a favorite. I love this page. I have this photo, which remember, it's always getting back to preserving those memories. I was in um, Texas with my friend and we went around to find these cool walls, art walls. And this one is all this dripping paint, which is totally rainbows and butterflies and everything Vicki Booten loves. And I love to refer to myself in third person because you know, why not? I have this lovely little photo and I printed it in a smaller scale because sometimes for me, the art that I'm building in the background is equally as important as that photo and I don't want to cover up all the pretty. So I just printed it in a three by four size and then did a whole bunch of techniques. We're going to do the kissing technique. We're going to do tone on tone stenciling on top with a stencil brush. And then we're going to add one of my favorites, rose gold to the background. And we're going to get started right now. So I hope you grabbed your tools. You want to have your uh, base that you're going to use, a cup of water, a paintbrush, I like to use a round paintbrush and this is out of my uh, brush set. So it's out of this set here. You want to have a, a round brush. This one is a number 10. So if you were ever wondering what those numbers mean, it just is the diameter of the brush. You want a round brush because it will hold lots of water and makes water delivery easier. And if you do the tapping dots on the background, it will hold lots of water and pigment. So those are my tools all set. The other thing we need, of course, are art crayons. So this is my color palette for this rainbows and butterfly background, because I have the ability to do it because I have that photo with all of those beautiful colors in the background. So I am going to place these down. In this kissing technique, I often will do in 
You could do this. If this scares you, you could place each color individually, but I'm going to go for it and I'm going to put all the colors on one background and kiss it to the background. So when I'm doing this, I'm going to a little color theory is going to play in there. I'm going to kind of be um, aware of where I'm going to place the colors and what sits next to each other. So with this, when I color this, I'm going to flip the sheet to kiss the background. So I want my blue on this side. So just keep that in mind. And I also had to remind myself because I might have done it backwards. So I am going to add some art crayon. I'm not going to place it right on the edge because I'm going to add water. And then when I flip it and start kissing the background, or in this one case, I'm kissing a little harder than I normally would. All of that water is going to need to go somewhere and you don't want it to explode off the side of your page. So just work leaving yourself about a two inch border around the edges. So I'm going to deposit some blue here. I don't need a ton because these are heavily pigmented. There's lots of color in these art crayons. I'm also when I place my colors, I'm not going to let them touch per se, because then when they do blend, when the moisture goes together, I will get secondary colors. So I'm going to put some blue there. I'm going to put some of the pink here. I'm going to put some green here. And maybe have it blend down a little bit like this. And how about some yellow right in the middle? So I know right now this kind of looks like a hot mess, but I can't wait to show you once we start blending these colors and apply it that it's going to, why this is magic. So if you want to understand the process behind it, is I'm going to make this background in one fail swoop. So this is the magic with the kissing technique, is I can kind of set up my pattern and I'm going to start with a yellow to blend it out first, just because um, as I start blending, I don't want to get the um, colors all mixed together. Not until I want it to happen, okay? So, and two, this uh, background might not be exactly the same as the initial one I did because really some of this, what, you're not going to be able to control exactly where this is going. And if you're wondering what I'm doing right now, that was a little light. So I'm just putting a little bit of pigment into that wet. I'm not adding more water. I'm just going to blend that out. When you're doing this, if you haven't watched previous lessons when I talked to you about the basics of art crayon, the whole magic here is controlling water and pigment. You want to make sure you blend all the lines out and that pig, the um, watercolor is now fluid. The other thing you want to watch too, because we're going to kiss this to the page, is that it's not too wet. If this is pouring off of your page, it's going to be really hard to control. So again, I know I need a little bit more pigment. Less is more. I can always add, but I can't take away. So definitely go in there after. And I can't wait. Because like everything I do, it'll be amazing to see what kind of result I'm going to get when I flip this over and kiss it. Even though I've done this technique, I don't know, probably a thousand times, every time I will get a different outcome. Okay, now... This is all blended out. I think I'm happy with this. I don't want it to be moving too much. So when I flip it, all these don't start to blend and I'm literally gonna flip it and kiss it. So get ready for it. Eek, here we go. So I am not pressing really hard. Like I said, for some of these techniques, I would go in here and I'll show you. I'm gonna show you because it's a learning uh, opportunity. I grab another sheet and I'm gonna show you a different way of kissing this background. With this one, because I kind of want these colors to blend, I'm kissing it like it's Brad Pitt or The Rock. This is pressing harder. I'm gonna show you another option as well. When I go to lift this now, physics, if I was super smart and could tell you what that is, is going to suck all that moisture into the center of the page. That's why I'm having this like kind of like little dance break. Doop, doop, doop. So these can kind of blend together and sink into the background before I lift it. And then when I lift it, it's going to suck to the middle. And I'm going to try to get it to suck up to the top because then we can do something fun here. So see there, that's like forceful application. So look how pretty that is. Now look at all this opportunity to drip. So let's do that. I'm just going to tip it. Oh, it's so pretty. Now this is a totally different color palette than the other one was, but I'm okay with that. Now if we want to cheat, 
Look, let's cheat because I want some pink drips in there too. So I'm going to color a little bit of the pink on here. And I'm also going to lift some of that off with a paper towel so that I can reposition the color I want there. I'm blending some pink and I'm going to position some pink right here wet. And we'll let that drip. So see, it's just kind of pooling. You could also even take it and just kind of pour it in. Oh, that was much easier, Vicky. I learn as I go. And see, it's already working its way down here. And tip. That's super pretty. Okay. And now, because I kind of want those to stay where they are, let's add a little heat before I go in and put some blue ones in. I'm going to put a little blue on this side because a lot of my yellow went back up into the blue. So it is more turquoise, and I want a truer blue up top. Now I'm going to go and put some drips in. So I am going to start with the blue. And I am going to load my brush up. Make sure your brush is clean. I even see a little green in there, but I'm okay with that because we're just going to go with it and let it happen. So blend this out. Make sure your brush is nice and wet. And I want this a little darker than the first time that we went in. And then we can just, oh, look it. Do you see now by putting those taps on here, what this ends up doing is it starts to build that depth of the blue. I love, this is always probably a step. That's a little piece of art crayon. And we can cheat and we can go in here and see where there's a dot already. I can go in and just tap, tap, tap and make it a bigger dot. Because it's hard to fake those sometimes. But just by kind of going where that initial tap already landed, we can just put a few in there. And here's the other trick. I like to do these drips, right? We talk about these drips all the time. So if I go in here now, and this is nice and wet, and I put some drips on there, guess what I can do with those drips? Get ready for it, because I'm going to show you, because it's what I'm here for. Take them, tip, and drip. <sighs> yeah. And if they're not going, you can't see this, but you will in a minute. Tap it down. Love that. So let's say we want this one to kind of be a bigger representation and blending it into that. I am not brush stroking this, I'm tapping it. Because when you start to add the wet onto already dry uh, watercolor, you will get harder lines where it starts to pool. And now we're gonna heat gun, your friend. But always remember to be um, a little careful when you're adding the heat gun so you don't bake the page because you will never get those uh, that memory out of the fibers of the paper going to clean up the blue and we're going to go in with the other colors. Same thing because we got to get there. I want you to see exactly how this will work. And let's put some pink taps in. You notice I haven't cleaned my water between. If you are concerned with it getting a little muddy, just make sure you empty your water and put some clean water in. I hardly ever do. I think I'm going to try to get as much off this page and then just do some of these tappies. But I'm not going to drip that on the page. Okay. I'm just going to leave it as circles, not uh, drips. I love that it. my investment is minimal. It's my time. It's my um, creative juices that I want to put out on this page and what I want to come up with. And then uh, it's a sheet of plastic and a sheet of um, foundations paper. I love that. So I could sit here if I felt like it. Say you're going on vacation and you only want to pack a little bit. It could be the sheet of plastic, one pack of foundations paper, stamps and stencils, and your art crayons. And you could, on that weekend, or at a retreat, when you go to a crafting retreat, just make backgrounds. Everybody at that retreat will be piled around your table trying to figure out the magic you're making. I'll be your best friend, because then they're going to drink the Kool-Aid with us and keep creating. So that is fun because I love doing this and I love to get people excited about what makes me excited. And if you can't tell, I kind of love what I do. So here we're going to just pick this up. But I love that it really is not, I'm not asking you to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars to get these results. But guess what? I will often say that I am like, I know, don't take this in the wrong way, but it's like the entry level, the gateway to mixed media. I bring out mediums and products that are um, have lots of pigment, great value, 
easy to use. So if you are brand new to mixed media, you don't have to enter at intermediate level. You can enter at a level that is comfortable to just practice and play. And then guess what? Come with me on that journey later and let's branch out into trying other products and, and other mixed media um, master's products that you maybe were terrified to try. But I'll tell you, this is a funny thing. I've been doing this for a while now and a lot of my followers that started because they're like, okay, Vicky's fun, I'm gonna try this because one box art crayons, I'll just start with that. Um, and now they'll show me, look what I did. I just made a canvas and I just made things I never thought I could do because I'm not an artist. And I say, yes, you are. So again, I'll jump off my soapbox, but it's important to share this stuff. It's important to give you the tools to make you feel like you can do these things. And it's why I came to scrapbook.com to film these videos because it's important to get this message out there. I know because I teach all over the world uh, mixed media scrapbooking when I started, that this is very scary to people. And if you're not sitting in the classroom with me where I can hold your hand through it, it can be a little terrifying. But it's not once you practice. Your investment is your time in a piece of paper. And look at all of the possibilities that you can come up with. So I really just want you to feel confident enough to give it a try. And what's nice with these videos, you can comment underneath, and I hope you guys do. The interaction is very important, that you can come on here and say, you know what, Vicki, this wasn't clear. How do I do this? And I'm going to invest the time in coming back to help you with this. I want you to drink the Kool-Aid with me. And I laugh when I say that. One of the ladies was asking me, what flavor is your Kool-Aid? And I'm like, you know what? It's either rainbow Kool-Aid or whatever flavor you want it to be. Because maybe my rainbows and butterflies approach isn't your approach. You might like a deeper, darker palette. Guess what? That's what the neutral palette's for. You make whatever tickles your fancy. Add all of these tools to your creative toolbox and you decide how this will work. And I don't know, the longer I go, the more I get excited about sharing this stuff. And it is, I love making. I've been doing this in some way, shape or form since my son was born when I first discovered scrapbooking. And I love that what mixed media does for me is it breathes new life into something I've been doing for a long time. So it doesn't get stale. And I will do this in cards. I will do it on scrapbook pages. If you're into Bible journaling, this totally will work. Just gesso some of those pages and then add the art crayon. And then, oh, oh my goodness. We can get into a whole different conversation and a whole group of seven classes on how different mediums will react with art crayons. So there is a little bit of green and we're almost, I'm talking forever, but I'm gonna say, here's the other lesson, another golden nugget. Know when to step away. And I'm at that point that I could keep talking and keep adding. And I think now it's time to step away and do the next technique. And guess what that's gonna be? Dry stenciling on top, tone on tone. I'm going to take a stencil. And this one, what's fun is I'm gonna go in with this flower stencil. Again, any stencils. When you ask me, Vicki, which stencils should I buy? Every single one that appeals to you because this is never going to dry out or get old or not have a use. So stencils and stamps, buy all of the stencils and stamps you love and that fit in your budget because you will never regret these purchases. So what are we gonna use for this now, Vicki? This is awesome, you're talking a lot, but uh, what's the next thing you're gonna do? Stencil brushes. I love these. So I have a bunch here just for time's sake. These are the Vicky Booten stencil brushes. The reason I like these is because the bristles are nice and firm and the handle is really comfortable to hold. It fits right in the little crook of your hand. And I find that when you're doing a lot of this, um, it can be a little tiring on your arm. And that's why I love these stencil brushes. But guess what? If you can't own six of them, you just clean between colors and you can reapply each layer of art crayon. So I'm gonna go in here and we're gonna start with a pink and I'm going to lay it on. I'm using this full sheet, but in, when you purchase the uh, stencil brush comes with a little uh, blending sheet, a little harder sheet of plastic. You wanna load the art crayon on here and then to load the brush, circular motion. 
and then just lift that up. So now what's magic with applying this dry is where I didn't have a lot of control with the wet medium, I have tons of control with the stencil brush. So if the kissing technique scares you, because kissing can be scary, go in with the stencil brush to start. Go in with a dry technique. And if you want to tape this down because you're nervous that you're gonna move it, put a piece of washi tape or painter's tape on there and do that. I'm gonna hold it and I know we're gonna be okay. And then I'm just going to start to blend some of this on here. This is tone on tone because I want a subtle effect. You don't want everything to compete. I still have to put a photo and all of my lovely embellishments on here. So the magic with doing a tone on tone effect is it will create lots of depth and interest, but it's not too much uh, stuff going on, right? If I have a lovely pair of dangly earrings on, I don't want to put a big statement necklace on. It's too much stuff going on. And it's no different on my scrapbook page. Now look it, I have not moved this. If I want to test and see if I've got enough applied, just hold it in place and lift it. And then decide, oh, you need a little bit more in this corner, Vicky. And here's the other thing. I can also move this. I did not do a rectangle. Do you notice? I don't want, if I put a rectangle, it's not fitting in that fluid shape of that watercolor. So when you put your stencil down, I kind of, if you notice, stenciled in the middle. The other thing, these have holes in them for a reason. It will fit in your junk journal or in the little uh, teal uh, carry case that I have out there, the Vicky Booten carry case. I love that because I also, with doing the mixed media, I love containers and storage options. So this, I love that I can throw this with my stamps will fit, this will fit, the paint brushes will all fit my junk journal. So, but with that, I don't wanna necessarily stencil these holes. So that's where washi tape can come in handy. You could take a little bit of washi tape, cover up your holes, and then you won't have the ringed uh, binder holes on your background. But I'm going to place a little off the side here. Here's another tip while I have you here, I might as well show you. If I just um, moisten the tip a little bit, let's find my mister. If I just put a little bit of moisture on there, not too much, and I try not to get my um, art wet. I just put one little blast. It will make this pigment really pop. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add some blue and some green and uh, I'm gonna do it all with the same stencil brush because then if you guys only have one at home and you're wondering how I go from color to color, this is it. Take a wipe and just till no pigment, which there shouldn't be too much on here because we just cleaned it. For a deeper cleaning, you can dip it, just the tip in water and then clean it off till no pigments coming off and then you can switch to color. Now the thing is, this is pretty wet now. If I went in here with this super wet and I wanna show you because it's a it's a teaching opportunity. So let's say I have to load some color on here. I'm going to put the next color on just for time's sake. We'll go in with the green. If I went on here, just so there's pigments, you can see something. And say I was cleaning this brush and I did not take all the moisture out. I want you to see what she's talking about if it's too wet. If this brush is, let's make it really wet. And if it's super wet, it will bleed underneath your stencil. So what will happen is that. That's why you need to dry that um, stencil brush in between. If you don't, it will bleed under. But guess what? Here's a secret. That's another technique. Because what will happen, paper has a memory. There's, there is fibers in there. So the first layer, when I put it in through the stencil, that pigment will dry in the pattern. But what's bleeding around will make this really pretty ethereal watercolor background. So it doesn't mean some of those mistakes are actually really amazing techniques. It just might not be what you want in that particular moment. So now I'm gonna go in with some green and um, I'm going to make sure the brush is dry because if not, it will not be as dry as if I had set this aside for a little while to dry. But what the nice thing is, is that um, I'll get lots of pigment fast because it has a little bit of dampness to it. So let's go in here and we're gonna do something a little magical with this green part. So now we're gonna go in and add the green. And what's kind of magical with the green, how it just kind of flowed down the page, we can spread this. And now at this point, cause I've already added uh, some of the pink, this brush is a little damp. So you're gonna find that one application of that um, art crayon pigment is gonna go really far. 
Again, do not um, stencil a rectangle. Kind of move that stencil around and oh man, look how fast that pigment went on there because it's wet. So let's load the blue up. Again, the brush is pretty damp. So let's get in here and this will be super quick. I love that, super fun. And then now we're gonna get in with my other favorite thing got to get that in here, is a little bit of rose gold glaze through the stencil. So take a look at it here. Look how beautiful that is. Again, do you notice as we add each layer, it's a little less, a little less, a little less. I don't want to cover the whole page in rose gold glaze because it won't stand out. You want to make sure when you go in here, it's a little a tip for success, is make sure you know when to stop. And when it is an accent, it should be exactly that in an accent. Because when you look at this page, you're like, oh, that's beautiful. How'd you do it? And I'm going to show you how simple it is. Let's do it right now. So I just want that kind of to flow down in this area. Here is the tip. When you're using this, because it's not a 12 by 12 uh, stencil, it's a little wet. Let me wipe that off. It's not a 12 by 12 stencil. So you want to make sure, again, do not go in and stencil a rectangle because that sometimes I do it. If I want a rectangle, so it's somewhere like maybe is a base for a mat, I will do that. But for the most part, I do not do that. It is not a formula I use in that 12 by, or in that um, kind of six by eight-ish size. You wanna go in, less is more. Look at that magic. So this looks just pink, but when it dries, it has a gold uh, hue undertone. It's beautiful. It kind of has like a mousse consistency. So when you, use this like look at what's nice is it is a heavy enough body that it'll stay put and it's easier to use but um it's lovely when you go to load your palette knife make sure you get it on the side of the jar and you load it on the bottom because you can only get it off the bottom of the palette knife so less is more you can always add but you can't take away so when you go in there to do that make sure you don't put too much on there Make sure that your surface is a little bit flat so you're not bleeding underneath the stencil. Work in one direction. So watch when I pull this in here, I'm just working in one direction and not in a rectangle. It's just kind of broken little flowers. I scrape and load um, the stencil brush, or pardon me, the palette knife, so that I can lift the product off and move it around. So this is okay, this is a good place. And now when I go to place this again, it's going to kind of be overlapping. So when I'm holding it, if you notice, I'm lifting it slightly like this. Okay, so I don't kiss into that wet. If that makes you nervous, let the first layer dry and then do this um, after. So you could totally do that and it would be okay. And watch that you don't put it in the lifted area. So I'm going to probably place this a third time as well. And less is more. I'm going to do that. I'm happy with that. I'm going to give it a wipe. It's kind of off camera, but that's what I'm doing. Just giving it a wipe. And then I'm going to put one more little section down here because it's pretty and I want to use it. And I just touched it, but it's okay. That is okay. I make mistakes just like everybody else does, okay? And put that down there. And look at how beautiful that is. So friends, now the background is all dry. And I love the magic that came out of all of the application of the art crayons with the kissing technique and the drips and the stenciling. And then look at all that fabulousness with the rose gold. So pretty. And you always ask, okay, I love making the backgrounds. That's lots of fun. But now how do we make it into an actual scrapbook layout or page? Well, look at the magic of television. It's all done. And I'm going to show you how you can put this together and even um, kind of run through um, my process where what do I want to put on the page or what message do I want to get out there or what embellishments and why did I choose them or why did I put the photo there? So um, while we're, I'm building, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what kind of guides me in the decisions that I'm making with this. So let's get started. So to start here, obviously for this one, I printed the one photo. I don't have the second photo out. This picture I had told you earlier was when I was in Texas and found this great wall and my friend was very kind and took my picture. Thank you, Katrina. 
And now I have the mat cut. So I'm not gonna show you. I, I feel confident that you can cut paper to fit your photo size. So I know that my photo's printed in a three by four in a horizontal uh, position. So now it's pretty much deciding. I want to make sure all of the prettiness underneath will shine through. I would just place, or I did just place the uh, mat and then I'm gonna kind of build around it. When I build a layout, I don't adhere with glue or adhesive until I'm sure I have all the bits that I want. So leading to, what is the first thing that I will grab when I make a scrapbook layout? Ephemera. And that's why every time there's a new Vicky Booten release, there are two ephemera packs because I can never get enough. There are 50 pieces in both of those. So when you grab these ephemera packs, that's the magic. You have 100 pieces of ephemera to choose from. And we split it in two packages. So one will have kind of icons, maybe some titles, and the other is all supporting actor or actress to your awesome icons. These ones will have titles, subtitles, tags, um, labels. So for this layout, um, of course, I have to have a butterfly on there. And because we have the floral theme going on with the ephemera pieces, like, look, we talked, always talk about adding some black. So I just kind of start putting some pieces down and moving them around and deciding what I want to use. So I just need to grab some adhesive, of course, tape runner I like, and always foam squares. That is your little magic helper. This is the workhorse on a scrapbook page that you like to have lots of layer in depth or foam squares. The other thing that I will grab are scissors, and I have Tim's lovely tonic scissors here that are great because they have the Teflon coating so I can cut my foam squares. So to get started here, again, with positioning and the thought process behind this is I don't want to cover all the pretty that I put in the background. And I have a rather small photo on here. Again, if you like to do double page layouts, you could continue this in just a smaller fashion on a second page and have your big main focus photo on this page and then do a whole bunch of multi photos on the second page. That option is there. Just all you do is flip it almost mirror image or just a smaller version if you want to make this into a double page layout. When I'm doing this, I know I want my title here, so I don't want to foam square the bottom of the mat. I'm just gonna stick a couple, and this is my trick. I don't take the backing off of it. So I will put the foam squares on the back and just get it lifted so I know where I want it to sit. And then I know that I'm going to foam square this butterfly up. So I will pop one on the back of him. Okay, I'm happy. This is how I build a layout. I haven't glued anything yet until I make sure that everything is positioned where I'd want it to be. And then I will just go in and cheat. I can move those, I know where they're gonna go and just lift the edge and put some adhesive down the right way. And then just stick that down. And now it's positioned where I want it or I have a second to move it if I wanna straighten it. And then all I have to do is lift the back and take the back off my foam squares. I love that. So that's my little trick, do it all the time when I'm building a layout so I can plan where I want it to go and then just kind of pop things around. All of these have foam squares behind it right in there. So that's how this all came together. And what's funny is even though they're a little bit different because I did them um, to show you how to build the background, you won't get the same effect every single time. See, it's easy, you can do this. So I hope you really enjoyed this whole little journey we took with making a fun scrapbook background using mixed media tips and techniques. And the biggest thing is practice and play. All the learning will come in sitting down and actually giving it all a try. So thanks for joining me. I hope you give it a try and share with me what you're making. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more from scrapbook.com, please like, share, subscribe, and leave a message. Happy crafting.